In my previous video, I reviewed the different options we have for, for capturing the upcoming total lunar eclipse, or for that matter, any total or partial lunar eclipse in the future using the Sea Star and the Sea Star app. That includes snapping some photos, taking a standard video, or doing a time sequence video. And after publishing that video, I've noticed that there are still a lot of questions that people have about the time sequence method. Hi, I'm Curtis, and in this video, I'm going to go through the time sequence in a little more detail to help clarify the impact of the sequence interval on the total length of the video that you can produce and also on the amount of time compression that results by using a time sequence video mode. As always, if you find this video useful, please like it. That helps other folks to find it more easily. And you may want to consider subscribing to this channel if you want to see more of the videos I produce in the future. And if you haven't seen the video I produced on the general methods for capturing the lunar eclipse, I'll put a link to that video down below this one where it says more, tap on that and it'll expand and you'll see where that link is so you can watch that video as well. So as I showed in the other video, the Sea Star has three basic ways to capture celestial objects. And you can see the three ways here on the slider. First is photo, where you take a single snapshot. Slide over, there's the video, which is standard video, where it captures 30 frames per second for the duration of your video. There's no time compression, it's one-to-one -one real time. So a one minute video is recording the events over a one minute time period. And then if you slide all the way to the left is the time lapse option. And if you tapped on the one there and you see you have a range of options for the time interval, one, two, five, 10, all the way up to 60. These are seconds between individual frames. So in time sequence, as I explained in the previous video, you're not taking 30 frames per second. If you set up the interval to be one, you're taking one image every second. If you set it up to be 10, you're taking one image every 10 seconds. And if you set it up to be 60, you're taking one image every 60 seconds. But you still need 30 frames to create one second of video. So you can use the time sequence on any kind of celestial events that you want. Something where things are gonna change over time, right? not just taking a single snapshot, something's happening like in an eclipse and you're seeing a change and you wanna capture that over some length of time. So let's use this upcoming lunar eclipse as our example. And here I showed the eclipse details for Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where I grew up. And you see the eclipse begins around midnight and ends around 6 a.m. So the eclipse is about six hours long but I suspect a lot of people will only be interested in the four hours between the beginning and the end of the partial phases, which starts a little bit after 1 a.m. and ends just before 5 a.m. Let's call that a four hour time period for which we wanna do our time sequence. So I put together this table to break down the different attributes of the time sequence method. And for this example, I'm assuming we're only gonna record the four hours from the beginning of the partial phase to the end of the partial phase of the eclipse. So that's a total of four hours. So we have options for time sequence, one, two, five, so on up to 60 second intervals. So how many frames do we get in one minute of real time? With a one second interval, we get 60 frames in one minute. With a two second interval, we get half that. And with a 60 second interval, we only get one frame per minute. So you see that the 60 second time interval setting is probably best suited for things that are changing extremely slowly over a long period of time. Now, how long does it take to get the 30 frames that we need for a single second of the final video? Well, with a one second interval, you get 30 frames in a half of a minute and with a two second interval obviously one minute when you go all the way up to a 60 second interval it'll take you a half an hour to get enough frames to get just one second of video and so this results in time compression numbers of anywhere from 30 to 1 for the one second interval 
to 1800 to one for the 60 second interval. So you're taking a period of real time and you're squishing it down into a very short period of time in the final video. So the most important question then is how long will the video be? So if you record for four hours with a one second interval, you'll get an eight minute video. And if you record for two second intervals, you'll get half that or a four minute interval. And if you did it at 60 second intervals, you'll get a tenth of a minute, which is six second video. So you won't get much if you use a very long time sequence interval. And then finally, you see how many frames you get. So you get 14,400 frames when you're doing one frame every second over those four hours. And you only get 240 frames at the other extreme. And then you see the file size that's required. So since the C-Star has about 54 gigabytes of storage, I don't think you're going to run out of storage even if you took one frame per second. So if you're planning on capturing this eclipse or any future uh, eclipse, it could also be a solar eclipse as well as a lunar eclipse. And you don't want something like an eight minute video, then you would use a longer time sequence interval. You can drop that down to four minutes or even under two minutes. Now the other option is to use the one second interval, get an eight minute video and then use some post capture video processing software to compress that eight minutes down to where you like it. So I hope that explains how the time sequence interval works and gives you some ideas on which time sequence interval is best for you. Now, if you were gonna record the entire part of the eclipse, the full six hour duration, then you can adjust these numbers up by one half. So the eight minute video at one second interval would become 12 minutes and the four minute video would become six minutes and so on. So I hope that helps clarify this time sequence interval. Don't forget to like the video and don't forget to subscribe. And until the next time, clear skies.